Hello, lovely viewers, my cherished viewers. You are welcome one more time to Rona 360. If this is your first time on this channel, Rona 360 is about arts, culture, and TV. If you love the arts, if you love culture, if you love technical and vocational education, then welcome home. This is the community, this is the platform where we will showcase and promote the arts, culture, and TV. Has it ever crossed your mind? That a fetish priest now becoming an evangelist of the gospel is now fighting against other fetish priests. Let's go into it. So over the few days, Nogopo, which is the Anglo word for did you come in peace? Actually, it is mentioned Nogopo, as in did you come in peace, has been on the news for good and bad reasons. The good reason is that Nogopo is a very peaceful town in the Volta region of the People's Republic of Ghana. Yes, my country, Ghana. So if you are watching us outside Ghana, Nobopo is a, is a town in Ghana, which means, did you come in peace or are you here in peace? Now, this town has a very interesting historic background. You see, the first settler of this town was a brave warrior who escaped the Akomu War. Akomu War happened several years ago in Ghana between the Gans and the Akwemu and the Ashantis. So in his quest to escape for his life after fighting tirelessly, he ran to a place, settled down. And that particular place was Kliko Agozome. So now when you go to the place, he realized that the people that he was fighting with and are dealing with might come after him as a repriser. So in his quest to protect himself, he went to Togo and Benin for some spiritual backing and spiritual powers. He brought back a deity that was so powerful. In fact, its power can be equated to the Ogun god of Nigeria or the tender god of Togo or other part of Africa. Now, the people that he, he brought this god to to protect the people and himself sort of had a short rift with him. So he settled at another place. And that is a place he called as Nogopo. Meaning, I come here in peace, so anybody who comes here must also be in peace. The town has been in existence for several years. And has been one of the towns that is known for some powerful deities in the Volta region of Ghana. The people there are very lively and powerful people. In fact, there are several towns that have powerful deities in the Volta region. But Nogopo is one of them. A couple of days ago, our very own um, uh, pastor, evangelist, a man of God, Ajanasari, was trying to chronicle his events. Something that happened in the past that led him to know the power of God and that made him to understand the efficacy of the name of Jesus Christ. And in, that, and in his attempt to make his story known, he thought about he and his other evangelists, you know, going on a mission and uh, they passing through the town, the Wopo, to another place. And in his attempt to tell the story, he passed the comment that... Let's listen to the comment. Honey, where did we sleep? The, the, the town close to Aflao. We slept at Agbozume. That was where our hotel was. Or the room where... And you have to go through Nogopo. On the best part Nogopo. And, 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 and Nogopo, Nogopo is the demonic headquarters in the Volta region. Et le quartier général de, des démons à, à la, dans la région Volta. We only have not said it. On n'a pas seulement dit cela. But the second night. Mais la deuxième nuit. Yes, this is what he said. That Nogopo is the center or the hub of all spirituality or what others have construed 
to me that Nwopo is a place where demons and witches have their headquarters. Now, everyone has a right to derive meaning from anybody's statement. We were not in the head and the mind and heart of this man of God. So we wouldn't know whether he meant it for evil or he just said it in person. Now, when that thing bro uh, broke the news, a lot of people jumped onto it and it caught the attention of the chief and people of the Vuta region, especially the town Nupo. The chief and people summoned uh, Bishop Charles Ajanasari and I've given him 14 days to appear so that they have a peaceful dialogue. And that is what I love about the people of Nupo and the man Charles Ajanasari. None of them means harm for each other. They just want to have a peaceful dialogue so that the people of Nwopo, the chief and people, can use that platform to educate him, to enlighten him, to tell him more about the town and what did they do. For goodness sake, the man of God has a wife who comes from the voter region. So I pretty much understand that he sort of has a fair idea, not much, a fair idea of some of the things that goes on in the voter region and other towns that are known for having powerful deities like Latte in the eastern region that is known for the Akonodi shrine, like Antoine in the Ashanti region that is known for the Antoine shrine. Uh, we have the Bredi uh, uh, shrine also in the Ashanti region. There is the Bosom Tree shrine. There are a lot of them. These people and these towns are there. They have all these shrines there. But what has become news within these few days, in fact, yesterday, for that matter, is another evangelist by name, Evangelist Mama Pat. This evangelist has a very interesting background. For years, she was a fetish priestess. Yes, if you are watching us outside Ghana, that is a beautiful woman. A mother and a wife, a very beautiful down-to-earth woman. She was a fetish priestess priestess and she served her community and provided guidance and spiritual leadership for a lot of people now nobody can say uh, that for all these years that she practiced her african traditional religion she did evil throughout no it cannot be said even the most evil people once in their life do good so let's give that room okay let's give that breathing space she is known for a lot of things, both negative and positive, in Ghana. Well, in her journey as a fetish priestess, something remarkable happened. She got converted and became a Christian. And actually led another man of God to pack all the idols and the deities that he, she has taken over the years bent them got baptized again and she started her work as an evangelist an evangelist being somebody who feels he or she is burdened to testify about the goodness of our lord and savior jesus christ that person can be trained or not trained for the sake of fairness okay for the sake of fairness such, such people can be given formal training or they can volunteer and go out to be evangelists. Uh, recently, something happened in Kenya where the Seventh day Adventist Church has actually disfellowshipped one man who got baptized and became an evangelist without any formal training. And through his evangelism, 300 people have been converted and joined the Seventh day Adventist Church in Kenya. But unfortunately, something happened that uh, the church in Kenya uh, has issued an, uh, an official communique to this fellowship. Him. That is the role of evangelists. They go out to testify of the goodness of God. Now, yesterday, whilst the Vokpo is waiting for the official meeting with Bishop Charles Ajit Asari, and a lot of people are talking about the power of God or the power of the church, and the power of the African traditional system or the ancestral worship. We woke up to the news where evangelist Mama Pat, popularly known in her former life as a fetish priestess, as Confort Agrada or, or Priestess Agrada, in 
her church. Openly challenging the chief and people and priests. In fact, for, for fairness sake, she was challenging the deity and the priest and the entire crew of people who are in charge of such spiritual deities in Liverpool to a spiritual banter. And her words were very sharp. In fact, let's listen to her words very well. now these are the things that she said now for those who do not understand the Akan dialect or the tree language of the people of Ghana this is what she meant she said that for years after she got co converted to become a Christian, she has openly threw the challenge to fetish priests, fetish priestess, to people who are engaged or who are involved in ancestral worship or African traditional religion, that they should come and challenge the God or the Christ that she has encountered. That led to her renunciation of the ancestral worship and her subsequent baptism. And she has dared this openly to any fetish priest that if you think you are powerful, come for a spiritual battle, just like the historic battle between Satan and Jesus Christ when he fasted and he was in the wilderness. And she even went to the extent of even throwing a barrage of insult or insinuations to these deities that she has said it time and again that these deities are powerless they have no power, they have no use, they can't speak, they can't hear, and so she does not see any reason why people would devote their time and energy to sort of pay homage or worship these beings. Now, what is of interest that people are asking on social media, that has also kept me asking a lot of questions, is that why would a former fetish priestess, who now is an evangelist for the Lord Jesus Christ, and still operate in the domain of culture and religion, be so open and bold to talk, and even dare the people of Nwokpo and the priests in Nwokpo that uh, 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 she is ready for any spiritual fight or banter. And uh, she will even be the next Sofuta Bosom. Sofuta Bosom, for those who do not know, is also an evangelist or a man of God in ghana who goes about helping people who want to do away with idols or deities in their homes and so this lady says that if the people of the people are bold enough they should rather summon her just as they've summoned bishop charles Arjun asari as i've talked about and that she is bold and brave enough to burn all their deities and idols. And the question I'm asking is, why would she be such bold and such brave to say this? And these are the things that I want us to talk about so that we type in the comment section and join in the conversation to make it so interesting. Point number one. We all know and have established that the fact that she was a former fetish priestess. And during her years, her long years as a as a fetish priestess, she was known for some good and some bad. And the bad aspect of her ministry as a fetish 
priestess was that people said she was a 419 and that she didn't have any power. Yet, she wore all the regalia, poured libation, performed rituals that were performed by high and powerful fetish priests that we know in Africa and in Ghana. So, my question is, could it be that during all these years of service, she has a secret, she has a knowledge on how to do away or how to overcome deities and idols in the African traditional system. Yes, because he who feels it knows it. She felt it and she knows it. She has been part of the system for years. So if there are trade secrets, if there are anything that regulates the system, she knows it very well than any other person. It's like how a former footballer will be so bold enough to query or react or criticize a current modern young footballer. Now, for purpose of records and making the conversation interesting, for those who do not know, when she was a fetish priestess, she went all the way as Togo and Benin to the places where Nogopo, the original settler, even went for his deities. So it means that she has first-hand experience about power or deities from the Volta region, from the Benin Republic, and from Togo. So I'm asking this question. Do you think that Konfo Agrada, in her former life, now evangelist Mama Pat, has enough knowledge about fetishism and African traditional religion so much that she can pull a trick or a card to collapse the system? Now, what has also kept me thinking since she released this audio is that mm, could it also be that evangelist Mama Pat, as the Christians will say, might be the hand of God to prove something to Christians in Ghana or in Africa about the power of the Lord Jesus Christ and the name in the power Jesus Christ and the need to do away with African traditional worship. You see, the reason why I am asking this question is that if you are a Bible student, you would realize that there are instances where the God of the Bible has used people as instrument or vessels, people that people did not even recognize, people or things that people did not even regard, has used them to prove a point of how omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent he is. God can do anything throughout the Bible, there are instances where God, in proving how powerful he is, as chronicled in the Bible, even made animals to speak. There are instances where other people who were not believed to be part of the selected, even gave evidence and were used by God for purposes. The lives of Dairos and Cyrus, the lives of King Nebuchadnezzar, where the Bible actually said, Nebuchadnezzar, my servant. Yet, he was the one who was being used as a hand of God to punish the children of Israel. So, could it be that God has heard this banter that has gone on for years between Christians in Ghana and those who practice the African traditional worship or the ancestral worship in Ghana? Because for years, Christians all over Ghana, both the laity and the clergy, have said it time and again that there is no power in idol worship and in fact, they use and I can word which means nonsense or fully. That is in Kwasiasem. It means nonsense or fully. That is the worship of African worship is nonsense or is fully. So could it be that God has heard this and wants to actually finally settle this rift between Christians and the African traditional worship? That is a second question I am asking, and other people are also asking on social media. Now, the third question that I want to ask is that, is all this thing going on just for hype? Could it be that Mama Pat is just trying to divert at attention because she has said time and again that she is the queen of social media. She said she is the Christian evangelist queen of social media in the whole world. So, is she just doing her usual things of just drawing attention 
to herself and her church. Or she thinks that summoning by the people of Lopo, the chief and the elders, will not reach her, her doorsteps. And so she can just say all these things and go scot free. Please type in the comment section and tell us what you think because it is going to get interesting. Now, the final question that other people are also asking, which is in sharp contrast to the first three I have asked, is that will Mama Pat go scot free? Is it that the, the work book? leadership have a personal beef to settle with bishop charles Ajinasari, and for that reason you see this as as a catalyst to to triumph in this beef thereby summoning him and even giving him a 14 days ultimatum and why are they silent on mama pat is it because she's a female is it because they don't regard her as a true woman of god <laughs> because they say iron sharpens iron no we are just asking Roland is here to showcase and promote our culture tradition technical and vocational education and arts so we are not making any judgment we are only projecting what the people are thinking and what people are talking about please type in the comment section tell us what you think what do you think will be the end of this matter would the people summon Evangelist Mama Pat, will the people of Nwokpo forget or even suspend Bishop Charles Asari's case for now and throw the biggest challenge to Evangelist Mama Pat? Will this even be the end of Evangelist Mama Pat? As some people are even saying that hey, this time around she has bitten more than she can chew. She can chew. This, is what, this is what we have for you. Join in the conversation and let's grow together thank you so much and as usual i will always end my videos by saying this i love you i care about you the world needs you ghana needs you nigeria needs you Cote d'Ivoire, south africa your country any part of africa that you come from needs you any part of the world that you come from needs you we need you alive because you have a light in you that needs to shine for other people's light to also shine. So if you love the arts, if you love culture, if you, if you love education, be it technical and vocational education, please, I am begging you, stay away from narcotic drugs. Stay away from the use and abuse of harmful drugs that can destroy the light and the talent and the gift you have. Because the world needs that gift. The world needs that talent. Again, don't also abuse prescription drugs because we need you alive. Because when you abuse drugs, drugs will also abuse you. You meet one more time. Stay blessed and catch you. Bye-bye.